Uh, time to talk and enjoy a little bit of science here. We have a total lunar eclipse coming up tonight, the 13th heading into the 14th. That is here on a Pi Day. And you know what? I'm meteorologist Robert Spetta, but I am not an expert on space. So I want to bring in a NASA scientist. This is Dr. Noah Peachtree. He specializes in lunar recon, also working on the Artemis mission, as well as a, one of your specialties is craters on the moon. This is the guy we need to talk to about a lunar <laughs> eclipse. Thank you for joining me very much here today, there, doctor. Thank you for having me on. And yeah, no, lunar eclipse is a great time to talk about the moon, what we're doing at the moon, and why we're so interested in it. Well, so tell me about it, because we get excited about a lunar eclipse. And of course, we have a full moon every month. But what makes, why, why is a lunar eclipse a little bit rare? And what makes it so special? Yeah, it's about alignments. And so you're right. You know, every month we get, every 29 and a half days, there is a full moon. But this full moon tonight and into tomorrow, will actually pass through the shadow of the Earth. Some full moons go a little too high or a little too low. We don't get eclipses. This is like the, the, you know, the baby bear, just right, right in the middle where the moon will pass completely into the Earth's shadow. And when it does that, it turns that beautiful, rusty red, orange color. Now, that color is caused by the projection of every single sunrise and sunset at that moment projecting onto the the Earth's surface. And so it's a wonderful reminder, not just that we have this amazing neighbor in space, but that our atmosphere plays a role in what we see. And so it's a great celebration of all things terrestrial, lunar, and solar. And so I guess with that said, um, why should people go outside and look at a lunar eclipse? I mean, it's turning red. A lot of people are going to have to wake up at 3 a.m. But what would be your kind of advice to be able to go out? And why should they wake up at 3 a.m. to go see something like this? Well, I think for a couple of reasons. One is that it is unusual. We don't get solar lunar eclipses every month or every year even. And we haven't had one visible here from North America since 2022. We won't have one like this that is visible across the country, indeed North America and South America, until 2048. So this one is special. It's also special because of when it's happening. We have a spacecraft that's orbiting the moon right, moon right now in the form of the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. We have a spacecraft that's operating on the lunar surface, the Blue Ghost Mission 1. And we're at this new era of lunar exploration where we are going to be sending astronauts to fly by the moon next year, astronauts to land on the surface of the moon the year after that, more missions to the lunar surface. For all the Swifties out there, we are in our lunar exploration era. And I think that's really exciting. And this is a great way to help kick that off. I love it. All right. So, you know, if, if you can get out there tonight, check this out. It's super cool. But I also want to talk about, you know, other things going on in astronomy. I've seen you work on the Artemis mission. Artemis 3, is that right? That's correct. I went out there and watched Artemis 1 take off. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Just blew my mind. The power behind it. Can you tell me about... Well, you know, first off, why do we study the moon? But why is it important to go back to the moon here? And you're, I mean, you're one of the scientists in Artemis 3, so I would love to ask you that question. Why, why does it feel important that we go back? Uh, so for Artemis 3, we're going to be landing humans at the south pole of the moon, a place that we've never explored. Yes, 50, over 50 years ago, we sent astronauts to the moon through the Apollo program. And those samples and those measurements that were made during Apollo helped show us a moon that was important. It was the, it's a moon that's important because it's our moon. It's a moon that records history that is erased on the Earth's surface. So if we want to learn about what the earliest history of our solar system was, we can study meteorites that come from scattered locations in our solar system, or we can study the moon, which is in our backyard and has a recorded history going back to four and a half billion years through the present. So I think of the moon as the eighth continent of the Earth. We study the moon to understand our planet and how planets work in general. Um, the, the things that we've learned from the moon are applied to every object in our solar system. And indeed, as we discover planets and moons in other solar systems, we apply those lessons of the moon to those objects. So the moon is important. It's this lens with which we look through to understand how planets operate. And by going back, we have an opportunity to understand more about the moon that's not recorded in the samples in the locations that we went to in the Apollo program. By going to the South Pole, we're going to be able to study areas that are perhaps older 
than some of the oldest rocks on the earth, um, some of the places that may pr contain volatiles, uh, resources that are fundamental for understanding how water may have gotten to the earth as well. So Artemis is the next generation of lunar exploration, not only to help us study the moon, but learn how to live off of the earth and eventually prepare to send astronauts onto Mars. So when we're watching the eclipse tonight, I will be looking at the entire disk of the moon, but specifically at that view, that location at the South Pole, where we're going to be sending um, future explorers. And I'll be thinking, what will the view be for those astronauts in the future that will stand there and look back at the Earth during future eclipses? Um, and that will be quite the sight to behold. Actually, that is a good question. If you were standing on the moon during the lunar eclipse looking at Earth, what would they be seeing? Would they just be seeing an eclipse on their end as well? So pretty much it'd be like a, a solar eclipse uh, view. What you would see is that you would be able to make out the very faint orange rim of the Earth, the sun rises and sunsets everywhere. You would see the surface around you cool off and take on this orange hue. And as a matter of fact, because we have a mission that's operating on the lunar surface right now, Blue Ghost Mission 1, they are going to attempt to make a, an observation, take a picture of their view wow. uh, uh, looking back at the Earth. So, you know, this is a great opportunity to, to project yourself. What would it look like um, standing on the lunar surface? Again, looking back at the Earth, this beautiful marble hovering in the sky with this reddish orange uh, halo around it. Uh, it would be a sight to behold, and we may be lucky enough to get a, a sense of what that looks like in the next few days. Wow, it's a good time to be alive. All right, so if somebody wants to go out tonight, what is your suggestions for viewing the lunar eclipse? Of course, this is not a solar eclipse. It's not like you have to get the glasses out, but what, what just some tips that you may have for them? Fortunate thing for lunar eclipses, you need two things, clear eyes, clear skies. So you want to be away from tall buildings, trees, bright lights. Go to a place that's relatively dark, with a great view of the, the sky, particularly straight overhead. Um, and patience, right? This is an event that unfolds over several hours. It will be late. So bring along a blanket, some you know warm beverages, um, but also bring along a camera, a telescope, binoculars to also get a, a closer up view of the moon as it passes into the Earth's shadow. All right. And I got one more question for you. I ask this of every NASA scientist, astrophysicist, what have you. Um, what is your theory? Or what is, what is your belief on life outside of Earth? Yeah, so, so I think, you know, when you talk about life, it's not just people, humans, you know, science fiction. It's multicellular, single cellular life forms. I think because we are learning so much about what planets are like in other solar systems, I think it's inevitable that we will see signs of leaf, of plant growth on other planets finding uh, evidence for uh, complex life, for, for other sentient beings. I think that's actually highly, uh, what's gonna be challenging. Will we eventually do it perhaps? But it's also gonna take for, you know, fortune to, to find that, that signature, that trace evidence of something else in the, in the universe. But that's why we look, we go to explore, to search for the unknown. And when we find it, um, it will fundamentally change our understanding of our place. We have learned how special the Earth is, the unique circumstances to provide an environment for life on this planet. And we're learning how challenging it is for life to exist on this planet. And so finding those other places in other solar systems is one of the great challenges that NASA is undertaking. Um, but one that when we, we get the inevitable payoff of finding evidence for you know, plant growth or oxygen in other atmospheres, We'll pay dividends. Well, hopefully our talk today and people going out tonight looking up at the, the sky and seeing something truly unique will inspire people to get into science and we can make those next steps uh, going forward. So thank you very much, Dr. Petram, for their joining me here and uh, talking about the uh, lunar eclipse tonight. Um, if you got anything else you want to say, I think we can wrap this up. One thing important is to for folks who want to learn more, go to science.nasa.gov slash moon and from there you can learn more about the eclipse what nasa is doing at the moon and what we want to be doing in the future with lunar exploration all right fantastic and on our website at firstcoastnews.com we'll make sure we put that link there too so people can have access to it all right thank, thank you. you very much sir and uh good luck tonight of uh, viewing the lunar eclipse and any of these future missions coming up here with nasa so thank you and here's to clear skies thank you so much Bye.